What do you think is the key to a happy relationship that will eventually be a lasting marriage? You might think that it's love, financial stability, or compatibility. I'll tell you what, the only factor you should really prioritize is God's approval. You are destined to be in a relationship that will sustain your happiness and growth with someone you love. This is His will, and I promise you that it will surpass the standards you have now. There is a person out there prepared just for you. However, looking for a partner is one thing, but identifying if this person is sent by God is another. We say that there are lots of fish in the sea, but not all of them will bring you good. Some come from a healthy and good place. Some are predators who have ill intentions. One way or another, I'm sure that you have been deceived before. This is because we are so exposed to the world that we can barely screen the people who enter our lives, including those who enter our hearts. God made us loving humans, and the downside to this is we give in to even the bare minimum of affection. Nowadays, it's so easy for people to fall in love, don't you think? As Saint Teresa of Lisieux once said, when one loves, one does not calculate. By just spending time together, communicating and giving gifts, some will fall in love immediately and agree to be in a serious relationship. The next thing you know, they're already wanting to get married. This is a prime example of those who always follow their hearts without considering God's say in this relationship. More importantly, they are victims of Satan's manipulation through phony people and affection. Revelation 12, 9 reads, And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. Satan was crowned as the deceiver of the whole world for a reason. One of the easiest ways of getting access to us is by meddling with our love lives. Instead of experiencing the most fulfilling married life, you might be in the most devastating one if you are not careful with the person you are considering to be your life partner. Now, you may have found someone who meets your requirements and expectations. You want to know if this relationship is ready to progress to the next level and if this person was sent by God specifically to be your spouse. You can be guided by these three signs as you find the answer to this concern. Number one, your faith becomes stronger. Mark 10, 9 reads, What therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. The moment you meet your future spouse, you have to know that God is in the process of joining you together. He is working on this relationship as much as the two of you are. And during such preparation, He will need you to double your faith in Him. God will prepare you to hold on to Him more strongly, for a relationship is just the beginning of a tougher yet wonderful journey. In turn, you need to be a stronger believer so that you may withstand the hardships with your partner and grow together. When you're about to join a competition, it is a given that you have to train ahead of time to build the skills you need during the game. For example, athletes jog regularly to increase their endurance because they know that in the actual game, they will get tired. Similarly, God is trying to strengthen your grip on His Word because you will need this once you enter marriage. He will be the center of this relationship and so He is training you to be spiritually prepared for it. The growth of your spiritual self greatly foreshadows your future in love. Number two, this person becomes vocal about their plans for your future. We are living in a world where dating has become casual. It tends to be treated as a game, a competition, or entertainment in general. It's more self-serving, wherein pleasure is often the end goal instead of marriage. But you know God's work never conforms to the ordinary. If you have already met someone and they are vocal about their intentions of settling down with you, it probably means that this person is sent and approved by God. When the Lord gives us something, He makes sure that it's nicely wrapped and perfect for us. In the same way, when He finally sends you your future spouse, 
they will ensure that you are aware of their intentions of marriage. This won't be someone who is not ready, too young, or not fully matured. This will be someone who actually wants you to be a part of their future. This is an overlooked sign, because a common issue that occurs is that they've been dating for a long time, but their partner hasn't expressed a desire to marry yet. Some women can't help but grow impatient and feel confused as to where the relationship is headed. Imagine the frustration of being with someone who doesn't have clear plans for the both of you. You should know that this is one of the biggest red flags that you must look for. If they cannot envision you as a part of their future, they are probably dating for pleasure only. And this, my friend, is most likely a relationship sent by the devil. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11 even says this, But now I am writing to you that you must not associate with anyone who claims to be a brother or sister, but is sexually immoral or greedy, an idolater or slanderer, a drunkard or a swindler. Do not even eat with such people. Even if they seem too good to be true and are super exciting to be with, if they're not ready to settle down yet, don't be afraid to walk away. This person certainly does not have God's approval to play with you or lead you on. Jefferson Bethke once said, dating with no intent to marry is like going to the grocery store with no money. You either leave unhappy or take something that isn't yours. As Christians, we know that in dating, God wants us to present our best selves. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22 says, Now flee from youthful lusts and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. We date not to waste time or to conform to the ways of the world, but because we know that dating is our method of getting closer to God's chosen spouse for us. And when you finally meet them, trust me, they won't be in a dating scene to just mess around. They will be ready for you and married life, for this is what God's been preparing them for from the very beginning. Number three, the timing and pace of your relationship is flawless. Timing is a critical factor in relationships and marriage. There should be a generous amount of time allotted to get to know each other and strengthen your bond. Additionally, we have a desired pacing in life as we have individual goals. Whether they are post-studies, careers, or family-making, we all have an ideal timing. If you meet the person God wants you to have as your spouse, timing can never be a problem. The both of you will find yourselves open to accommodation if there are initial conflicts. The relationship won't be rushed or forced. This connection will grow gracefully at God's pace. In other words, it will grow slowly but surely, just as Ecclesiastes 3.1 tells us. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. Just because we know that God chose this person for us doesn't mean that we're entitled to expedite the relationship. When God said that he prepared them for you, it means that you are responsible for taking the time to unfold these preparations. You shouldn't feel pressured to enter marriage immediately. You must explore your dynamics with this person first, and by doing so, you are adhering to God's timing. There are cases where people start making marriage arrangements after a short time of knowing each other, and honestly, this feels a bit horrifying. We know that the devil is always out to manipulate us. One of the enemy's trademarks is abrupt and uncredible timing. Believe it or not, time can be used by the devil to distract you from the fact that you are falling into his trap. You see, when everything is moving too swiftly, you won't notice what you are actually getting into. In Acts 1.7, he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. We cannot know for sure how God wants the pacing of our relationship to look. Should you be together for months or years before marrying? Who knows? However, we know with certainty that He is pleased when we take the time to process everything. When you meet the right person, the timing will be impeccable. 
Some people are not comfortable in letting God play a role in their marriage. They feel that their spouse is a wild card excluded from their spiritual journey. As long as their partner makes them happy and satisfied, they tend not to care about how their relationship with this person can affect their relationship with God. Believers are sometimes not immune to this flaw, for we are humans after all. Have you ever met a brother or sister in Christ who is or was in a relationship with someone who wasn't interested in the same spiritual journey? Love is so complicated. There are people who claim to love you, but only to an extent. This is a common experience though. We've all been victims of love, but I'm telling you, there is only one person that's right for you, as per God's standards. In 1 Peter 3, 7, we are instructed that, in a similar way, you husbands must live with your wives in an understanding manner, as with a most delicate partner. Honor them as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life, so that nothing may interfere with your prayers. This is the kind of beautiful harmony God wants your relationship to have. He wants you to be taken care of. Let God shower his blessings onto your marital relationship by watching out for these signs. God loves someone who is after his heart at all times. Love is not just an emotion. It's essentially an action. It's never enough for someone to just say that they're in love with you, right? The only way you'll actually believe it is when they start backing this claim up with actions. Have you ever questioned someone's feelings for you? People commonly like to say things without acting accordingly. They might continuously confess their feelings for you. But what can you do with words? What can you get from just feelings? This is such a common problem at the beginning of a relationship or simply potential ones. We tend to participate in a game of charades with these people, making endless attempts at interpreting whatever their actions are to decode what they feel for us. This issue doesn't entirely stem from their shortcomings. Sometimes we can become complacent from receiving treatment that's less than what we deserve. Yes, this person might be giving you gifts, providing you security, or spending time with you. But are these the standards you use to determine if they genuinely love you? Things of the world, such as material gifts and security, can deceive you into thinking that the giver is absolutely head over heels for you. I don't necessarily blame you if you accidentally fall into this trap. However, there is a saying that goes, we accept the love that we think we deserve. And now I'm thinking, if you believe that this shallow form of love is what you deserve, then you are underestimating what God wants for you. I'm here to tell you that when someone truly loves you and this person sent by God, he will show you signs that are more meaningful than the surface level ones that the enemy wants you to believe in, such as pleasure and material gifts. Remember that aside from the fact that God professed his love for us countless times in the Bible, he also proves this every single day. He acts according to what he thinks is best for us. He acts on our prayers and requests because it's one of his love languages. This brings me to the point that he'll not let you be with someone who cannot remotely match his way of loving you. These are the signs that mean someone truly loves you. 1. The first sign is when they start bringing up the best in you. I quote in Jeremiah 17, 9, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? You've surely encountered situations where someone you know has been completely blinded by love. In their eyes, their partner is the best person there is. But the reality is that their partner is leading them into wickedness. The love of their life is changing them for the worse, but they have no idea. For all we know, it might have been you at some point. Have you ever been with someone who dragged you into a bad place? I'll tell you this, this isn't someone who truly loves you. In the third chapter of the book of Colossians, we're instructed as God's people to clothe ourselves in compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, and a forgiving spirit. Then it states in verse 14, Over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. I think this is the most interesting part because it shows how love encompasses all the mentioned virtues God wanted us to uphold. 
This means that love cannot stand alone. When you love someone, these virtues must be exhibited and encouraged. This commandment from God is quite literally the formula of being the best follower. And a major part of this is demonstrating these virtues and loving others. Look, if someone truly loves you, they would not want to bring you down. One of their priorities should be elevating the quality of your life and your relationship through teamwork. True love would not dare to bring dishonor to your life. Its role is to bless you so that as a couple, you may bless others as well. As told in Romans 12.10, be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Look at the failed relationships in the Bible. In the story of Samson and Delilah, Delilah was persistent in getting information out of Samson that would unveil his vulnerability. She wanted to bring out his most vulnerable side and hand it to his enemies. But Samson was too swayed by Delilah's seduction tactics to see this. He was the victim of the idea that there was mutual love. So he gave in and told Delilah his biggest secret. One of the most common examples would be this person who makes you choose between them and something valuable in your life, such as your family or career. Someone who loves you knows that you shouldn't be forced to choose. You should be allowed to enjoy the things you love the most without your relationship getting in the way. They would not want to tarnish the work of the Lord in you. Song of Solomon 4.7 declares, You are altogether beautiful, my darling. There is no flaw in you. To be loved is to be changed for the better. Love is so powerful that it has the ability to greatly influence your identity. No one should make you compromise your values or negate your way of living for the sake of love. If so, the love they claim they have for you is definitely not genuine. Two, the next sign you'll notice is that this person brings you closer to God. 1 John 4.8 tells us, Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. When someone's wholeheartedly in love with you, they would want to play a role in your spiritual relationship. As the scripture says, God is love. That means that such love is meant to glorify His name as we share it with our neighbors. Would you want to be loved by someone that doesn't think that love and God are connected? It would most likely be a self-centered kind of affection. The truth is that if this person has insincere feelings for you, God would probably not let the two of you be in a relationship. He might separate you from each other. But the fact that he's showing you that this person positively affects your relationship with him suggests that they may be the one he's chosen for you. This person would look like Job, who asked his wife to hold God's word even if they were losing everything. We are all guilty of occasionally slipping away from God's grip unconsciously or not. And we need someone to remind us why we need to cling to God. Someone who'll nudge us to make sure that we're in the right lane to salvation. Guess what? Only a person who truly loves you can do this. They love you to the point that they care about your relationship with God. They care about your future and His grace. The sad thing is that I've heard a lot of stories from my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ that their partners are against them going to church activities or against their faith in general. Don't let yourself be caged in a relationship like this. The best way to know someone's real intentions for you is to find out the role they play in your spiritual journey. Three, the last sign is when they are naturally honest and faithful to you. In Proverbs 3, three to four, we read, let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Faithfulness plays a huge role in love because it's an expression of respect. If a person's transparent with you, even without you asking, it's because they know in their hearts that they have the purest intentions for you. The best part about being sincerely loved by someone is that they will have absolutely nothing to hide. They are not afraid to show you who they truly are. And because of this, you'll find it easy to communicate with them, from petty matters to big ones. This person will build a foundation of mutual trust and honesty between the two of you. Because if this person has a habit of keeping things from you or directly lying to your face, then they're no better than someone who hates you. 
Yes, they may be your biggest cheerleader and best friend, but they must respect you enough to always engage in honest and open conversation. A fashionable woman once had two suitors, and she wanted to see who loved her the most. She put on the ugliest clothes she could find, messed up her makeup, and called the suitors to come over. When they arrived, the woman asked, How do I look? I'm meeting someone very important today, so I styled myself today. The first man let out a forced smile and said that she was as beautiful as ever. The second suitor agreed, but afterwards told her that it wasn't her usual look, and it may bring a negative effect considering the importance of the meeting she was about to have. The woman was delighted with this response. A genuine person will never be afraid to tell you their honest opinion in a way that you can handle. They will appreciate you for who you truly are, but also call you out if something seems off so that the two of you can communicate about it. In addition to this, if someone loves you to a great extent, loyalty is not a sacrifice. It's something that they demonstrate with extreme pleasure because they have the honor of being committed to you. You've probably heard of this, but there are people who intentionally ask someone else to make a move on their partner to test how they respond to temptations. True love makes you feel good about yourself and your relationship. It doesn't trigger insecurities and doubts. Do you notice anything in these three signs? All three are not focused on what they can give you, but rather what they do. Romans 12.9 reads, Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. When you think that someone truly loves you because you know what they can offer you, this may disappoint you in the end. I'm telling you that what they do to make you feel their love outweighs any of the material things. You have to start measuring or analyzing love based on the person's effect on your life and your relationship with other people. This is not hit or miss. If they truly love you, all these signs will appear. Keep an open mind and allow God to reveal someone's true feelings for you by asking for His wisdom. One of the days that we most often dream about as young adults is the day we finally meet that special someone whom God's called us to marry and whom we'll be with for the rest of our lives. Even though not everyone's been called to marriage, the desire you have to settle down one day, the longing you have for an intimate relationship with someone, is proof that you were destined to be married. And as a child of God, He'll prepare someone whom He's approved and chosen to be your partner. But before this special meeting, some of us are often victims of other failed relationships. Sometimes we want to do it our way. However, a day comes in our lives when we look back and realize that, beyond our feelings and expectations, God gives us partners who will serve His purpose in our lives, thereby bringing fulfillment to the both of us. Feelings may fade into memories. Trust can be broken. Gifts can be lost or destroyed. There are many reasons why you must not build on these things. Rather, you must start with God. When He gives you the right person, all of these things will be there. But the foundation will be deeper than that. The foundation that will sustain the relationship will be the Lord God Himself. When God is the foundation of your relationship with your partner, it will last. The Bible tells us that God wants us settled where He wants us to be. If you're settled where God wants you to be, you'll be at peace and find strength to overcome whatever the enemy throws at you. 2 Samuel 7, 9-10 says, And I will provide a place for my people, Israel, and will plant them so that they can have a home of their own and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people will not oppress them anymore, as they did at the beginning. Regardless of where you've been, Regardless of how many failed experiences you've had, and regardless of where you're coming from, God is using this message to tell you He's bringing that special someone chosen as your partner into your life. He's saying to you, like He said to the Israelites, I'm providing a place for you, my child, and there I will plant you so that you can have a home of your own and no longer be disturbed. The first time I heard these words during a prayer session, the first thing that came to my mind was the topic of relationships. I know what it means to go from one failed place to another in a relationship. I know what it means to be so fed up that you don't even want to try again. But I also know what it means when God gives you rest 
and brings you to your own place you can call your own. Like the Israelites, you may have wandered through different experiences, disappointments, fears, discouragements, anger, and bitterness, all from issues relating to being with the right person. But I have good news for you. Everything you've ever had to go through has brought you here. There's a reason you just heard me say this. In fact, there's a reason you're here and listening to this message today. And I want you to see this as your first confirmation sign that God's about to bring someone chosen as your partner into your life. Get ready. It's not time to give up and quit on yourself or on everyone because of what happened to you. You can have the best again. Do you remember the story of the woman with the issue of blood? Do you realize that Jesus was not the first person she'd gone to for help? The Bible tells us that she'd spent everything she had on different physicians, but she never got better. But that day, after she heard about Jesus, she made up her mind to go out and touch him. She believed that just one touch would change her and turn things around in her life. And she was right. If she'd given up, she would have missed that one encounter that made the difference. Similarly, I'm saying this to you right now. Giving up because you haven't found someone won't make you better. There's a reason you still feel that longing in your heart. No friend can fill it. No amount of fun can fill it. Sex, money, cars, work, and family can't fill that place. It's reserved specifically for the one person approved by God. You see, like I said earlier, being with the right person is much more than experiencing butterflies in your stomach, going on dates, enjoying a good time, raising a family, or living together. A partner who ruins another's happiness still knows what these things mean. However, being with the right person God sends establishes a divine experience that guides you, makes you better, points you to God, and helps you fulfill His purpose for your life while at the same time having all those aforementioned things. So my first message for you today is this. Don't give up yet. God is about to send someone he approved, but you must keep your heart open or else you'll miss them when they come. What's the second confirmation that God's bringing someone chosen as your partner your way? He separates you from others whom he hasn't approved for you. In the first confirmation, I told you that he'll put desire for someone in you. It'll feel right to have a special someone you want to spend each moment with. You may start imagining your future with them, even if you don't put a face to it. You start imagining what it'll feel like to share your struggles and victories with someone. That's the first confirmation that God's preparing you and about to bring someone. Now, the second is that if you were or about to be in a relationship with someone other than that person, God will separate the two of you. You see, when God wants to make a provision, He first makes sure that you have room to receive it. He would tell the Israelites, for example, to prepare themselves because a provision was coming that day He sent the quails to their camp. He also told them to eat the Passover meal fully dressed and in haste that night He was going to deliver them from Egypt forever. In other words, He told them to be ready to go while they ate. So when God's about to bring the right person chosen for you, He'll set things in motion in your present or potential relationships that are outside His will so that you'll be single when the right person comes. Another confirmation sign that God's bringing someone into your life as your partner is that He'll begin to guide you to things, places, people, or activities you haven't tried before or left behind a long time ago. Usually, these things involve engagements that have to do with your destiny and calling as well as things that help you heal and improve yourself. He may lead you to take a program at college, attend a conference, do a particular charity or community work, or go on a personal prayer retreat far away from where you are. It could be anything. When God starts leading you through these things that'll help draw you closer to Him, heal you, and help you become more purpose-driven, it's a confirmation sign that the person who you'll be doing these things with and build a life with is coming. God uses His instructions to position us for our blessings. Always remember that. The Bible says that He sent His Word to deliver His people from their destruction. 
When you commit yourself to follow God's purpose for your life, you'll find the right person there. Disobedience will never bring you into God's best. Like Jonah, it will always take you in the wrong direction. Rather, I encourage you to become calm and quiet before the Lord. Seek and find what He wants you to do with yourself while you wait for the right person to come. Don't allow anything or anyone to pressure you into a false or premature relationship with anyone, even if they look like the one. When the right person comes, the Spirit of God will tell you. That person will not only be a believer, but they will stand with you in God's calling, and your lives will naturally synchronize with each other. You won't have to force anything or try to convince them to follow you, to serve God, or to support your calling. They will because they love God, and they're the ones ordained by God to not only help you fulfill your destiny, but to ease the burden along the way. This, of course, will be mutual, as God will be using you to do the same in their lives. So, while you wait for them, seek what God is saying and follow His directions. Watch out for these signs and get yourself ready to be the kind of person you want to marry, and you will never regret it. This is the last one, but not the least of the confirmations. God will put a dissatisfaction for your shortcomings in your heart that will drive you to start working to improve yourself so that you don't hurt anyone you want to be with. I believe that before God gives you someone He's prepared for you, He makes sure that you can manage the relationship. Remember that Jesus said not to give pearls to swine. You don't give precious things to those who don't know the value. You see, the fastest way to improve yourself is to first become dissatisfied with your present state. If you would never want to be with someone like yourself, then you would try to make sure that no one ends up with someone like you. Of course, God doesn't condemn us. Instead, He points things out in us that need to be worked on. And when we work on them, we become the best versions of ourselves. This doesn't mean that we're perfect, but we become a blessing to whomever God's bringing. No one's asking for a perfect person because we all know they don't exist. However, everyone simply prays for someone to help bear burdens and not someone to be a burden themselves. When God begins to lead you to work on yourself for whomever He's bringing into your life, it's a confirmation that He's preparing you for them. And when they come, both of you will be like two stars coming together to form a beautiful constellation that inspires others and blesses the world. God wants you to take your hand and walk you through life, including into the marital destiny He has prepared for you. In the eyes of God, your marital life is as important as His calling and purpose for you. And here is why. You see, if you marry the right person, you are more likely to be at your best in fulfilling God's purpose for you than if you marry the wrong person. A marriage with the wrong person will take your attention from God's purpose and, if care is not taken, from God completely. Imagine having to raise your children in a home where your spouse won't even allow you to live in peace. Imagine trying to build intimacy in an abusive home where each second without your partner is your only escape in peace. These things can have an abortive effect on a person's destiny and even on their faith. God doesn't enjoy it when we lose years and then come back to try to get it right from where we missed it. Yes, there is restoration, but with God and our cooperation from the beginning, we may never need to be asking for restoration. Recently, I had the opportunity to sit down and talk with a friend on the subject of marriage. She had just come out of another failed relationship. The relationship had looked promising, but upon careful observation, she had noticed that she was unequally yoked with an unbeliever. This person had openly told her he was not a Christian, and even if he would let her practice her faith for a while, when they had children, her children would not follow Christ. This was hard for her to swallow because she was really in love with this person and obsessed about him. She had to tell herself the truth and move on from him. While we talked, she told me she fears that she may have been called to a life of singleness and that God was telling her that. I had to quickly caution that idea and share with her what I am about to tell you now. You see, 
It is important that we carefully study and understand God's Word so that we can avoid misrepresenting it. For example, Paul warned us from divine inspiration that a time would come when false teachers would come, teaching people not to marry, not to eat foods made by God, and other things. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1-5 through 5 says, The Spirit clearly says that in later times some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. They forbid people to marry and order them to abstain from certain foods, which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and who know the truth. For everything God created is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, because it is consecrated by the word of God and prayer. Why am I sharing these verses? Many passionate and honest believers may read Paul's letter to the church in 1 Corinthians 7 and conclude that marriage is a bad thing. Some in their blind zeal may say, in order to seek God and press into spiritual things, they have to abstain from marriage, from food, or from sleep. However, that is not what Paul was saying. I love how you can cross-check the Bible and understand balances so that you don't go into error. Just like my friend, If you can get some of these people to open up to you, they did not come to the conclusion that they should abstain from these things because the Bible says so. They are abstaining because they have failed in many relationships. Some do this because of low self-esteem, because they don't believe they can ever find someone who would love and want them. They conclude that such a feeling is God's way of telling them to go into a life of singleness. However, this is not true. I pray that God gives you His spirit of understanding so that you can understand not just His word, but His will for your life. I have met believers who dedicated themselves to serve the Lord so much that they had to sacrifice a marital relationship with anyone. They believed in God's higher calling upon them and had no desire to have anyone come between them and that calling. They found completeness in God, just like Paul. And they knew if they entered a marriage, Their passion would do more harm than good, and they wouldn't be able to honor God. And so, they left that possibility for the Lord. These are the ones Paul was referring to when he said he wished everyone was like him. Marriage is a beautiful experience, but with it comes some baggage, just like everything else on earth. And for marriage to work, utmost commitment must be given to it. That was why the apostle was encouraging the church like a loving father. While you are unmarried, you can serve the Lord completely. But when you get married, God himself wants you to serve your partner with your heart. You cannot abandon your partner in your home and think God will be happy, even if you have the greatest ministry on earth. He then told them, if you know you don't have the grace and calling to be like me, and you notice you crave companionship, please get married so that you don't become consumed by lust. You see, the fact that you crave companionship with a special someone in your life means that God wants you to have a relationship. This is the first sign that God wants you with that person. Maybe there is someone in your life right now or someone about to come into your life. If you notice a pull towards them in an affectionate way for companionship, even when you don't want to, it is a sign that God wants you with them. This was what I told my friend after sharing those words with her. I told her, listen, when the time is right, you will know. Don't place God on your clock. Don't let anyone pressure you into feeling like a failure because you are not yet married. And don't rush into a relationship according to just your senses. Take your time so that you can get it right. It is better you go in late and get it right than rush in and live in regret. The second thing I told her was this. When the right person comes, if God wants you together, he will communicate it to you through his spirit within you. Many times... Believers forget that we are born of the Spirit of God. The work of the Holy Spirit didn't stop at baptizing you to speak in tongues or giving you salvation. No, His is a continuous work in your life from the day of your salvation until Jesus comes. Philippians chapter 1, verse 6 says, Being confident of this, that He who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. And the book of Job tells us that it is God's spirit that gives your spirit understanding. Job chapter 32 verses 7 through 9 says, I kept thinking, experience will tell. 
The longer you live, the wiser you become. But I see I was wrong. It's God's spirit in a person, the breath of the Almighty One, that makes wise human insight possible. When God wants you with that person at the right time, He will give you a hint. You will just know. It will feel right in every aspect. Sometimes He may speak to you through different means to give you the green light to go ahead. This could be something like a dream or vision, a word from different people, a message from the Bible, or a conviction in your heart. Until then, you have to wait it out and maximize your time. Remember, God will never unite you with anyone who is not on the same page with Him, even if it is to save them. God can use many other means to save the soul of an unbeliever instead of throwing his son or daughter into a relationship with them. If marriage is a gift from God to you, then just like God's word says that every good and perfect gift comes from him, your marriage should have goodness and perfection in it. This is not because you or your partner are perfect, but that your connection being divinely orchestrated is. Another thing that would happen if God wants you with someone is alignment, spiritual, ministerial, and life alignments are some of the strongest ways God confirms that He wants you and someone to go through life together. Just like I told my friend, I do not believe that God would give you a partner that would take you or your children away from a relationship with Him. No way. Rather, He gives you a partner who drives you even closer to God. You need someone who wants you to discover and fulfill God's purpose for your life. I learned over the years that you don't need someone in your life who is too gentle about anything you want to do. You need someone who is able to see things from different perspectives and how they affect you in the long term, especially through the lenses of God's plan for your life. And who can challenge you to get you out of your comfort zone, take you by the hand and walk with you to act on the things God is calling you to do. You need to partner who will encourage you to go back and get an education if that is needed. You need the partner who tells you in all love and respect that your limitations are not strong enough to hold you down and they are willing to stand by you to overcome them. Look out for such a person in your life and check your spirit. It might be God's way of telling you to be with that person. Do not miss God's plan for your life because you don't want to be accountable to anyone. Accountability may be all that stands between you and the legacies that will outlive you. So in conclusion, if God wants you with someone, He will use your craving for companionship, stirring you towards a relationship with them. He will speak to your heart and lead you by the Spirit in you. This is why, rather than focusing on marriage now, focus more on developing your spiritual senses. Put unnecessary things, friends and attachments aside and learn to spend time with the Holy Spirit. The more you do, the more of Him you'll know and understand. When He leads you, you will know. And lastly, on this note, God will usually guide you to His son or daughter who will challenge you in love and respect to be the best version of yourself according to the things God has called you to. They would rather give you back to God than keep you to themselves. You should also learn from this you are not ready for a relationship if you only see marriage as a means to satisfy or complete you. Until you can find yourself in the Lord and find your wholeness in your singleness, you won't be able to manage your relationship with anyone else. Strengthen your relationship with the Lord. Let Him teach you true love, patience, and wisdom so that when He brings the right person, you both will be a match made in heaven. Will God allow you to have feelings for someone? but keep you from each other without taking those feelings away? There are questions we ask as Christians that come from a place of sincere confusion and a desire for direction. You see, life is comprised of various crossroads where one wrong decision can result in years of damage and regret. Marriage and romantic relationships are some of those points in life. Usually, one of the things that make people become special to us is when we develop strong feelings for them. When this happens, we may start to imagine a future with them, wishing for a happy ending, filled with flowers in a meadow and lots of laughter. However, often, it doesn't end this way. The person you see today may be someone entirely different tomorrow. 
The feelings you have for someone today may reveal themselves to have only been infatuations tomorrow. Hence, beyond all the butterflies and desires for pleasure that characterize your feelings for someone you love, God must have a solid influence on your future in decisions concerning people you care about if you want to have a chance at blissful success. But why would God allow me to have feelings for someone but not want us to be together? Why would He make me have feelings for someone but keep us apart? There are many reasons this may happen. I'll share some of them with you in a moment. But they're summed up in these words. God loves you and wants you to have the best. And the best of God is only reserved for those who wait on Him. God beautifies everything in its time, not in your time or in the time others give you. Ecclesiastes 3.11 says, He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. You really can't understand why God does what He does from the standpoint of human understanding. You just can't. However, when you look at what God's Word says, you can understand that everything He does springs from a place of love. A simple interruption in your relationship with someone can result in a delay that reveals something you never imagined was there. Certain delays provide opportunities that make certain things manifest that would leave you dumbfounded because you never imagined them in the first place. Sometimes what God is doing is saving you and sometimes what He's doing is saving the person you love. Sometimes you think you're ready for something, but God keeps you from it. Yes, you have a deep desire for this person. Yes, you feel deep love for them. However, you're not so ready for the relationship with them. Hence, although your feelings are not taken away, God keeps you two apart. Now, you may think about this and conclude that God doesn't want you two together. And then you try to use other things to take your mind off this person. That is wrong because it won't work. You'll instead be filling your life with things that will contribute more as burdens than relief later. So instead of thinking of ways and things that will help you replace your feelings for this person, seek the Lord and find out what His plan is for keeping your feelings for them intact, including whether He wants you two together or not. You see, there's a bigger picture here. And as a child of God, you need God to reveal it to you so that you don't miss His mark for your life. For example, God may be keeping your feelings intact for this person you love because He wants you to prove that love. What does this mean? If God places a genuine feeling of love in your heart, there are things you should know. No matter how long it takes to be with that person, true love waits. True love makes room for the object of affection. True love makes adjustments to please the one involved. I've seen people go from bad to good because they really loved someone, and that love made them renounce their former ways. Sometimes God will send the right person into your life, have you develop feelings for them, and then use that love to change you. We have a similar situation in the Bible. Jacob and Rachel's story in the book of Genesis is a story of love and passion for someone. Now, this isn't to encourage polygamy, but marrying Leah through the deception of her father didn't change how Jacob felt for Rachel. He was ready to work another seven years for Rachel's hand in marriage. This was the same Jacob that was used to using people for his benefit. Now, because of the love he had for Rachel, he was changing. I believe that God was using his love for Rachel to break into deeper aspects of his heart in a special way. The experiences he got within those 14 years strengthened his character as a man and as a husband, and it proved his love for her. If it was for sexual satisfaction, it wouldn't have lasted that long, nor would he have gone that far. The love he showered on Rachel's two sons is proof he truly loved her, even more than he did her elder sister, Leah, his first wife. Hence, God uses the delay in your relationship with this person you love to test and prove your love, passion, and loyalty to them. God uses it to prove your motives. 
He uses it to check if your love is enough to make you change certain things you've held on to for so long. Another reason God, in His love, may not remove your feelings for someone you love is to help you learn about His own love for you. You see, although God does everything He does for you, sweet or painful, out of His own love, at the same time, He uses the love you have for this person to teach you newer things about His love that you'll never find away from Him. The love of God never fails, regardless of time, place, or even your actions. The Bible tells us that nothing can stop God from loving us. Romans 8, 38 to 39. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The love of people may fail, even though you love them deeply. However, whether you love him back or not, the love of God never fails. It remains. People do not end in damnation because God hated them. They end in damnation because they didn't accept the love of God. God may keep your feelings for someone you love so he can teach you the depth of his love for you. Yours may be a human and limited love, and yet you may bear the pain of not being the object of your own love. God uses this to help you understand how He feels each time you neglect or turn away from His love. God uses it to teach you the things He can do for you because He loves you. You know, when you love people, you forgive them, pray for them, wait for them, and give them all they need that you can provide. God uses this to also teach you that His love for you leads Him to forgive you, run after you, and give you another chance to come to Him. In other words, this situation gives you a better understanding and appreciation of God's love for you and helps you trust in His love more than you will in the love of someone else. Another reason God may not be removing the feelings for the person you love is because He may be bringing the person back into your life. But for now, while He keeps you two apart, He wants to perfect a work in your lives. This may look so simple, but the truth is that you may never know certain things about yourself until you're in a relationship with another person. You may never know how hurt you are from past experiences and how that's affected your mind negatively until you're intimate with someone who now has to suffer for things they're not responsible for. You may never know how clingy or over-dependent you are until you meet someone with whom you can be completely yourself. This is good for a while, but then nobody wants to be with someone who can't stand on their own two feet. Therefore, God may keep that feeling so you know this is the right person for you. But also know you must seek His help in dealing with the anger, impatience, over-dependence, and other burdens you carry in your heart. Beloved, God cares about you. And at the end of the day, everything I've shared with you is now for your own benefit and is proof that God wants you to have a peaceful and enjoyable future. He sees what you cannot see. You may not know or see what the future holds, but you can trust the one who sees, knows, and holds the future. Through your faith, you can trust Him with what lies ahead. And through humility, you can let Him fix you today as He prepares you for that future. You may be dealing with fears of losing this person, or even never being ready for them. But you shouldn't. Why? Because one, God is never late. And two, he's never wrong. So even if the person does leave you, it only validates that they were never there for you in the first place. And God was preserving you for the best person who would come after them. By the time God brings the two of you together, you will look at yourself and gratefully realize that God has truly brought you far. You will see the maturity in how you manage things, how you think, how you respond to situations. You'll indeed know that God has made you better. So rather than become desperate or afraid, become humble and trust God to work on you.
Allow Him to perfect His plans and purposes for you until He is satisfied. Continue to pray and wait on Him until He reveals what you have to do. It's better to know that when all is said and done, you are on God's side and He is on your side. Because at the end of the day, that's all that matters. That is where there is true satisfaction.